Rednecks and cops were like natural enemies, dude. They did not get along at all. You know what I mean? Like I've, I, I spent my whole life surrounded by rednecks growing up. I've never once seen them react positively to a sudden police presence. <laughs> But now you got, today you got rednecks unironically being like two things I care about. Back in the blue and outlaw country music. <laughs> what? The, the most popular redneck show in the history of television was literally just about two cousin good old boys running from the law in a sweet orange car, right? Self-proclaimed liberal redneck Trey Crowder is a master at pointing out the glaring contradictions of life as a conservative. The most popular redneck sport in America is based on running from the law. NASCAR. It's true. That's literally true. NASCAR was founded by moonshiners evading the law. Like rednecks turned driving drunk into a spectator sport. Right? <laughs> Never got along. But ever since Black Lives Matter, now all of a sudden it's all back the blue you know what i mean i'll see somebody i went to high school with after some protesters get arrested or something they're like oh well can't do the crime don't do the or can't do the time don't do the crime right and i'm like really randy <laughs> i think you were singing a different tune when your step cousin got arrested for breeding illegal reptiles all right <laughs> You see, Trey is uniquely equipped to speak on these issues because he knows what it's like to grow up in an environment that perpetuates these beliefs, and he can now look back on them with a fresh and humorous perspective. That's the same aim that our buddy Randy got put in when he was trampled by Antifa. I, I thought it was Steve and them. Huh? No, it's Antifa. Antifa sure does look like Steve and them. Hey, ain't this where you called that police horse the N-word? Well, he was black. I know. And this is the very spot where our good friend Bobby Buck got his fake leg tangled in that snake flag and fell off the makeshift gallows. You know, his daddy left him that leg. So sad. As we stand here on this hollow ground and commemorate our fallen brothers and sisters, mostly brothers, we know that they will not have gone in vain because eventually, at long last, uh, all the other people, the blacks, the Muslims, the gays, the uh, trans, yeah, of course, the, uh, the young people, the hippies, the Gen Z. The one that's just attracted to people's brains. Uh huh. Uh -huh. The uh, vegans, environmentalists. The, uh, the ones that dress up like foxes but still have their d out. Yeah, of course. Then. Anyway, all of them eventually they will come to their senses and realize they cannot silence our people any longer. And finally, our voices will be heard in this country for a change. How they really nailed the personality and the, the energy of these idiots who stormed the Capitol and were insurrectionists. Right. They they tapped into the MAGA community very well there. And the other thing is, you know, people's identities and personal experiences really shape their politics. You may not think it, but if you unpack why you feel the way you do or think you or think the way you think about different issues, you probably can trace it back to your identity and your personal experience, what you've gone through. And while Crowder is an expert at calling out the absurdity of right wing politics, he knows how to tackle more substantive issues as well. The Trump experience is like going to Texas and being shot by rodeo clowns. Like this abject nightmare is completely preposterous, but also not surprising somehow. That's what it's like living under Trump, right? Like if you don't know what I mean this week, his lawyers have been in court arguing that he should be immune from prosecution for any acts he committed as president. Supreme executive power accountable to no one and above the law, just as our founding fathers famously favored. Like if you listen to Trump and his people talk, he's like, all right, first off, I should be immune from prosecution for the stuff I did as president. Secondly, if I win this year, first thing I'm going to do, prosecute Joe Biden for all the stuff he did as president. What? How does that work? Also, what stuff? And they're just like, just border stuff, stuff involving Mexicans. Don't worry about it. Just, just stuff. It's like, okay, so you're saying that Joe Biden, the president, should be prosecuted for nebulous crimes, which you can neither identify nor provide any evidence for. But Donald Trump, the president, should be immune from prosecution for seditious crimes, the evidence for which the entire world has been privy to. And they're like, yep. Exactly. You got it. How does that make any sense? And they're like, well, because because Donald Trump's awesome and Joe Biden sucks. Trey is spot on here. Republicans have completely abandoned all efforts to portray themselves as principled since Trump became the party's leader, giving the game away 
in the process. The judges, they made this argument too. They tried to press them on it. They asked them, they're like, okay, so are you saying if, if a president used SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political opponent in broad daylight, are you saying they could not be prosecuted for that? They could get away with murder? And they're like, well, no, they'd have to be impeached and convicted, but not prosecuted. It's like, who, who's going to impeach the guy that's publicly murdering his political opponents? You can just murder your way into an unimpeachable position. You can murder every damn one of them if you want to. Why not? Also, does this mean Joe Biden could use SEAL Team 6 to murder your tang tented ass? Is that how it works? If Joe Biden don't like the results of this election, can he just overturn those and there ain't sh y'all can do about it? And they're like, no, 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 of course not. Of course not. It's like, why? Why not? What makes it different? And they're just like, because Donald Trump's awesome and Joe Biden sucks. And a full one third of our fellow Americans will hear that argument and be like, well, yep, makes sense to me. What is going on, man? The whole Trump immunity argument where he can do whatever he wants, commit all these crimes and get away with it. He doesn't have to be held accountable whatsoever. It just reveals a much larger systemic issue of our failing education system. In a lot of ways, that is by design by politicians. Some of them want to dumb you down so you don't think critically. Because if you don't think critically, then you can't hold them accountable. You cannot hold their feet to the fire. And by that, they can get away with so much more. And you think they're giving you what you want, but they're really not. They just make you think that, right? That's part of the propaganda. And it also reveals, you know, the apathy towards the well-being of everyday citizens. When you have people really believing that Trump can do no wrong and he can get away with whatever. And when it comes to you know political comedy, I do think it can be a useful tool in addressing some of the issues that we have in our society from a, uh, from a political standpoint. I don't know if it's a game changer, but I do think if you have the right message the person who's charismatic and how they deliver that message, I do think it can affect how people see things. Of course, it's not going to be it's not going to be everybody, but I do think there will be some changes or people might have different perspectives because of how that comedian is presenting the information about our society and how we deal or how we look at politics.